In this video, I'm going to be putting an asterisk on many of the potential NBA GOATs. In other words, I'm going to kind of be playing devil's advocate in a sense and presenting a counter-argument to why each NBA great can't be the GOAT. Again, this is more for the sake of argument and not necessarily an actual position. So without further ado, let's begin. And who better to start with than LeBron James? There is no way LeBron James is the GOAT. As far as I'm concerned, every NBA ring he's ever won was either circumstantial or the team he was facing was so weak and his team was so stacked that of course he was going to win, and I'm mainly referring to his first NBA ring when his super team defeated a baby Thunder team. And even in that series, Kevin Durant did not get his deserved foul call with 12 seconds left in Game 2. There was a huge opportunity for the Thunder to be up 2-0 in that series, but bad officiating allowed the Heat to tie the series 1-1. Had Kevin Durant got that foul called, he would have been at the free throw line with the ability to tie up the game and there could have been a much different outcome. The rest was history when the Heat tied up the series and then got a bunch of home games as there was a 2-3-2 playoff system instead of the 2-2-1-1-1 format which the finals now operates by for home and away games. As for LeBron's second ring, we all know that Ray Allen saved that man's career. And also, Greg Popovich benching his entire team within those last seconds didn't help. I mean, if Tim Duncan was on the floor, he could have easily gotten that rebound instead of Chris Bosh. The Spurs, for all intents and purposes, were supposed to win that Game 6 and beat the Heat 4-2. They even rolled out the Larry O'Brien trophy. The world was definitely ready to crown the Spurs as champs, and LeBron would have lost another final series. And even if LeBron won all his heat rings fair and square, having that much talent and that huge of a super team and only coming up with two rings is kind of embarrassing, especially that 2011 finals where the chosen one became the frozen one and averaged around 2.2 points per game in the entire fourth quarter of the first five games. And worst of all, he was averaging three attempts in the fourth quarter. Never in a million years would we see Michael Jordan average just three attempts in the fourth quarter of an NBA Finals and only score 2.2 points per game in the NBA Finals fourth quarter, there's no way a GOAT of basketball can choke at that magnitude. As for his one Cleveland ring, the NBA did LeBron a favor by suspending Draymond Green in Game 5, which was a huge momentum shift that allowed LeBron to win on the road and then holding the fort down at home is much easier with home court advantage. As far as Game 7 is concerned, once a series reaches Game 7, pretty much anything can happen and of course his teammate Kyrie Irving hit one of the most clutch shots in NBA Finals history. That was the one that really sealed the deal to ensure the Cavs win that game. And of course, there's LeBron's Mickey Mouse NBA bubble ring, where the Lakers had prime Anthony Davis before his injuries, and this team beat a not-so-super Miami Heat team led by Jimmy Butler. Despite being the clear favorites, the Lakers still drew out the series to six games when they had no business having this series be that close. LeBron going to so many finals were more of a product of a weak Eastern Conference. There's no way LeBron goes to 10 straight Western Conference Finals. The East was no beast at the time. LeBron is struggling to make it to Western Conference Playoff Series, let alone Western Conference Finals. All in all, LeBron has four rings, but three of them seem kinda hollow. And with only one solidly earned ring, no way there's enough cachet to be the GOAT of the NBA. Oh, and I didn't even bring up Le 4 and 6 in the NBA Finals. He's had so many All-Stars and so much help, yet he still lost 6 NBA Finals. He has a losing record, yet he played with so many future Hall of Famers. Yeah, LeBron's not the GOAT. But to be fair, LeBron did go up against some of the toughest competition in NBA history, being those insane Warriors teams. Which brings us our next player, Steph Curry. Sorry Wardell, I cannot consider you the GOAT for a number of reasons. One, you're a one-way player. Yes, Curry plays solid defense, but if we're going to be extra critical in terms of all-time greats, Steph Curry does not play GOAT defense only GOAT offense. So many other potential GOATs are two-way greats. In fact, I think literally every other GOAT aside from maybe Magic Johnson are considered two-way great players. Curry's not a bad defender, and he's technically an okay defender, but he's not a GOAT status elite defender. Also, two of his rings come with Kevin Durant, and he was facing LeBron James with J.R. Smith. And in the first Warriors-Cavs Finals, LeBron all alone took the Warriors to six games. That's kind of embarrassing on the Warriors' part. When Steph Curry faced a fully healthy Cavs team, he lost to them. 
Next up, we have Bill Russell, and before we begin, I just want to say both on and off the court that he was a legendary man, and he had an awesomely positive impact for not just the sport of basketball, but for the world itself. May he rest in peace. I am only being critical of his basketball NBA ability. With that in mind, Bill Russell can't be the GOAT for a number of reasons. One of the biggest reasons is that most of his opponents were milkmen and plumbers, while the Celtics had one of the strongest NBA teams ever constructed. During every season of his career, Bill played with no less than three and as many as seven other future Hall of Famers on his very same roster. So at every given moment, every waking second he stepped on an NBA court, alongside him was at least three and at most seven Hall of Fame all-time greats. Forget Super Team or Justice League teams, this was a straight up entire Infinity War worth of superheroes on your side. Also, his trips to the finals were much shorter and technically easier by those standards. There was only a division semifinals, a division finals, and lastly, an NBA finals. So just three rounds and the semifinals were a best of three, not a best of seven. Plus, for the bulk of his career, there was only eight teams, and before you say that less teams would cause more competition, keep in mind the Celtics had a monopoly on NBA talent at the time. Less teams was most definitely something that worked in their favor once they knew how to beat said teams, all that was left was the repetition. More teams create more randomness, and more randomness makes it harder to go to the finals. If the GOAT debate was ever about ring total, there would never be a debate. Bill would be the GOAT and there'd be no discussion. Even without putting an asterisk, I think fans value the quality of rings over the quantity of rings, and that in itself is self-explanatory why players with much less rings are in this debate over Bill Russell. What's not self-explanatory is how anyone would consider putting a guy who averages 26 points per game, 12.5 rebounds, and 4.4 assists per game with a PER of 26.9 in the GOAT debate. And they wouldn't because that's prime Kevin Love stats. No one would ever put Kevin Love in the GOAT debate and they shouldn't. With these stats in mind, let me remind you that Larry Bird averaged 24.3 points per game, 10 rebounds per game, 6.3 assists per game, with a PER of 23.5. So slightly worse stats all across the board, but two more assists. They are both not that athletic players, and just about equal three-point shooting as they both shoot 37% from beyond the arc. Now I'm not saying Larry Bird would just be a mid-tier all-star like Kevin Love is. What I am saying is Larry Bird is not the GOAT. There are clearly better players than Bird, and Lakers fans don't get too excited because Magic and Kareem aren't the GOATs either. Kareem may be the all-time points leader for now, but no one would ever say he's the greatest scorer ever, just like how many don't say that John Stockton is the best passer ever, even though he leads the league in assists. The phrase of best passer ever is usually reserved to Magic Johnson, who has less assists than Stockton. Also, Kareem played in the 70s for a large part of his career, one of the most star-lacking decades in NBA history, and one of the most fastest-paced games in NBA history, with huge amounts of point inflation due to the breakneck pace of the late 50s, 60s, and even early 70s. Pretty much what I'm getting at is that a lot of Kareem's regular season MVPs aren't the same as Jordan getting all of his MVPs in the star-studded era that he played in. Not that MVP total should be any sort of measure for ranking players anyway, because no one on earth would say that Steve Nash is a better player than Kobe Bryant because he has more MVPs than him, it's a terrible argument. And thus, Kareem's MVP total should be considered the same logic. Kareem also played with the Showtime Lakers alongside greats like Magic Johnson and James Worthy. But Magic isn't the GOAT either, so let's get into that. A magician never reveals his secret, but it's no secret that Magic Johnson was a turnover machine as he averaged nearly four turnovers a game. That's pretty much twice as many compared to other great point guards like Chris Paul, Steve Nash, Jason Kidd, and John Stockton. Take Chris Paul, who averages about two turnovers a game. Imagine if he had twice as many turnovers. The NBA would scrutinize him so hard that he would have to be like his brother and sell car insurance. Especially because he's not a champion, so they would directly blame his turnovers for the lack of rings. One of the only other all-time great point guards who averages the same amount of turnovers as Magic Johnson is Russell Westbrook, and we already know how much criticism Westbrook gets for his turnover average. Speaking of Westbrook, people nickname him West Brick, but he's a much better three-point shooter than Magic Johnson ever was, and he averaged just about the same amount of assists as Magic Johnson. They also average about the same amount of rebounds at a little over of seven per game. If you look at both of their stat sheets and not their trophy case, it actually would be quite hard 
to tell the difference statistically between Russell Westbrook and Magic Johnson. Yet no one is saying that Westbrook is the greatest point guard of all time. And Westbrook's stats are diminished over time due to playing so long. If you just compare primes, you could make a statistical argument to say that prime Westbrook stats look better than prime Johnson stats. Magic is also not an all-time great defender. He's a good defender, but not a GOAT status defender. It is fair to be critical to say that he doesn't have GOAT-worthy defense, which is why I would personally take Kobe over Magic in an all-time Laker debate. But speaking of Kobe, as great as he is, he's not the GOAT either. Before I begin, I do want to say that Kobe is an amazing player. He's a legend and may he rest in peace. We are just going to be critical of his NBA basketball talent. Kobe Bryant is not the GOAT. He has five rings, but three of them you could say were Shaq's teams and Kobe was just a sidekick as Kobe was 21, 22, and 23 during that first Lakers three-peat. And yes, he was the second best player on those teams, but not the first best. Kobe only has two finals MVPs, and he's an extremely inefficient player. Inefficient for GOAT standards, mind you. We're being hypercritical here. He has a career PER of 22.9 and a 44.7 field goal percentage. For comparison, Jordan has a career PER of 27.9 and a field goal percentage of 49.7%. That is a really huge gap in efficiency. And of course, there is that 2004 final series against the Pistons. Now you could blame Shaq for that series who isn't the GOAT either, but Kobe was especially terrible in that finals, shooting 38% from the field and averaging only 22 points per game, which is bad for Kobe standards and bad for GOAT standards. And in one of those games, he only put up 11 points. It's not as bad as LeChoke in the 2011 Dallas series, but it's bad enough to not be the GOAT of the NBA. Now, I'm not asking Kobe to put up 100 points a night, because the guy who did score 100 points a night, Wilt Chamberlain, is not the GOAT either. And again, before we begin, Wilt was an NBA legend both on and off the court, may he rest in peace, but he is not the GOAT. Some might even say he's the greatest stat patter of all time. There's a reason why Wilt didn't win any rings until after he stopped chucking up shots and being a ball hog and started sharing the rock. It's because Wilt's high scoring days did not lead to winning basketball. Also, the league average for those times had a team average of 73 rebounds per game, which is insane to think about. So Wilt getting all those rebounds in that era could be argued to be more a product of the era itself than Wilt's own rebounding ability. Wilt is still a great player and a legendary man, but it's hard to say he's the GOAT of the sport with his so few ring total and the fact that his major stats didn't lead to championships in the first place. Now again, he eventually did win rings, but not during his amazingly, unpossibly high stat days. Alright, alright, it's enough of bashing these NBA legends. It's time we be extra critically harsh on the guy many consider the GOAT, and that is Michael Jordan. Jordan was a great player, no doubt about it, but many forget just how great the basketball legend Scottie Pippen was as well. Jordan's record without Pippen is 154 and 170, which is a win percentage of 47.5%, and in the playoffs, he's 1 and 9 without Scottie Pippen. That's a win percentage of just 10%. On the flip side, Pippen without Jordan has a record of 295 and 185, with a win percentage of 61.4%. And in the playoffs, he has a non-Jordan record of 19 and 21, with a win percentage of 47.5%. Plus, Scotty almost led the Bulls to the conference finals without Jordan. Another thing I want to bring up is that maybe, just maybe, Jordan's mid-career retirement created a mythos around his two three-peats. Imagine if he never retired during his prime and then played those seasons out. What if he got fatigue and didn't have a perfect finals record because of it? Again, this one is a little too hypothetical because you could also hypothetically argue that what if Jordan won during those years as well? So we could set that to the side for now. Jordan was also never able to beat Larry Bird or Magic Johnson until way after their primes, but to be fair, the Jordan that Larry and Magic were beating was a really young Jordan, so we never saw Prime Jordan versus Prime Larry versus Prime Magic all at once. But the reason I'm bringing this up is, what if Jordan's perfect finals record is more of a product of weak finals competition? Because Jordan never went up against prime Showtime Lakers, he went up against old Showtime Lakers. If instead of the Jazz back-to-back, -back, he faced prime Showtime Lakers back-to-back, -back, would it be possible that prime Magic and Kareem steal a series from Jordan? 
And yes, the 90s had some insane competition, but it was top-heavy competition. So the good teams were good, but the bad teams were quite bad, and this is due to all the new teams being added to the league. As far as the regular season is concerned, this was an expansion era, so there were so many new cities who got teams like Miami, Minnesota, Charlotte, and Orlando. And during the regular season, there was a lot of cannon fodder for the better teams to just build up their good records and get easy wins and nice stats, which helps Jordan's overall win percentage and stat outlook and might make it much stronger than it really is. Imagine if LeBron James during his regular seasons were facing baby teams in cannon fodder. Would his regular season stats look much nicer than they already are and have a higher PR? Who knows? But anyway, if none of these players are the GOAT, then who is? Well, of course, it's a close call between Taco Fall and Brian Scalabrini, but that debate is for another video. Let me know what you thought of this video, and if you want me to add more players in the future, I would love to talk about the likes of Akeem Olajuwon, Tim Duncan, and much more. Don't forget to dunk on that like button, subscribe with notifications turned on, I'm Rebound Rewind, and I'll fast forward to you later.